So what has the White House been doing to provide for the American people? Well, we're getting reports that the White House is helping, but then there's other reports that are saying that no, the White House is not helping. And I wanna talk about one thing that somebody told me today, and they said that the White House is giving Americans a false sense of wealth. What does this mean and why? Well, here's what I can tell you. There's something called a DTI, okay? It stands for debt to income. And in the lending world, debt to income and the debt to income ratio is extremely important. Uh, mortgage lenders won't give you a conventional loan if your debt to income ratio is higher than like 45%. Most want you to be under 36%. Now granted, there are some exceptions where the debt to income ratio could go as high as 49.9%. But generally, lenders want your the borrower to have the lowest debt to income ratio possible. For auto loans, uh, most lenders, they have a maximum debt to income ratio of 50%. Here's the problem. For decades, and really really for decades, but the last handful of years, Americans with student loan debt have said that they can't afford things like uh, payments on a home or payments on a car, simply because the student loan debt itself is just so high and interest is killing them. Now, today, the White House did something, okay? The White House wanted to make it easier for the American people and borrowers to be able to secure financing for things like an asset in a home or a liability in a car. Now, here's what happened this morning. The student debt forgiveness application has opened up, meaning that more than 40 million federal student loan borrowers can now apply for up to $10,000 in student loan forgiveness. This is huge. But why is this so big? We knew this was coming. Well, here's one of the worries right now. One of the worries is that the White House just gave the green light for over 40 million Americans to go and spend. Gave 40 million Americans a false sense of wealth. All due to the fact that the average student loan payment was about $400. And the average payment now is going to be reduced or completely wiped away. Let's say you had $9,000 in student loan debt. You're gonna save a lot of money now that you do not have to pay that off. It's been wiped away for you. This is gonna give Americans the ability to now go and spend, go possibly secure financing for a home, or a car. Now, why is this a problem? Well, what's one of the biggest purchases you will ever make? It's a home. Right now, the housing market is crashing. Some housing experts are saying that this crash will result in about 45% loss in 2023. A 45% loss? That's substantial. That means what, a $200,000 home is gonna be is gonna lose ninety thousand dollars. Yeah, so you're gonna have a you're gonna pay two hundred thousand dollars for a home that potentially this next year is gonna be worth one hundred and ten thousand dollars. And I know for those in California and a lot in the West Coast and up in New York, even somewhere you know places in Florida, probably thinking one hundred ten thousand dollars. That's a steal. I'll take it. Well, yeah, when the median home price is over four hundred thousand dollars, that's ridiculous. But then let's talk about the auto market. Cars are being repossessed like crazy lately. I actually was just driving down the street uh, a few days ago and saw a car being repossessed. Yeah, just being towed off. The owner didn't look very happy. Well, millions of people are simply letting their loans default. And when I was talking to somebody just the other day, they were considering the exact same thing. Just letting their, just not even paying off their loan, letting the bank come and repossess their car simply because that car that they bought, when they bought it, it was at the height of the market. Now, they could buy that exact same car for about 30% less. And again, there's millions of people that have done this exact same thing, and now they're considering just letting it go, and if they have this additional $400 a month that they can then go and use, do you think they're gonna wanna just keep paying off that old car? Maybe, or some are gonna go get a new loan, a new car, and then pay that off, guess what? They're gonna be paying more than $400.
and, and this. Again, financial experts are telling us that this is not the, the worst that it's going to get. It's going to get even worse. But with this false sense of wealth, financial experts are also telling us that consumers are still spending their money. We're seeing Americans with a higher credit score. They're buying more goods than those with obviously a lower credit score. And I don't want to go in and uh, you know say just uh, you know people with higher credit scores always are the ones that make more money. But generally, if you are a higher income earner, you usually do have a higher credit score. That's just the way it's worked over the past. Also, at the same time, consumer spending on credit cards has increased. Savings at banks has decreased. And this is why some financial experts are saying that we are in a very risky situation right now. Now, here's what I can tell you. First off, people are spending more money on credit cards. Why is that? Well, some are spending more money on credit cards because, well, that gives them a little bit of a cash back bonus, right? 1%, 2%, whatever it is. They could potentially get that. That's a small few. Here's the other thing, and I've talked about this before. Banks are not giving us our money. So when, when I saw this report that savings is down, well, of course it's down. Especially, let's say I, um, I'm only making a you know, couple thousand dollars a month, right? I would be very worried that, okay, I go to the bank to get an extra you know, $500 because I got to make this payment today. And the bank says, sorry, we can only give you $200 today. Come back tomorrow. Well, if I couldn't wait till tomorrow and I needed that $500 today, I'm screwed. That's the issue that we're having. That's the issue we're facing. Now, granted, most banks are not going to be like, ah, you want $500? We don't have that. I can only give you 100 or 200 now you go to the bank and ask for 5,000. There's gonna be a handful of banks that say, sorry, our limit's 2,500. Or sorry about that, but you know we can only give out $5,000 a week. You took out an addition, you know, $3,000 already. So the most I can give you is 2,000, sorry. You know, that's what we're facing. So yeah, the savings rate at banks is lower. But why wouldn't it be? When people are questioning how secure their bank actually is. But here's what I can tell you. The White House is making these changes. And again, we talked about this before. We have talked about this over and over again, that the White House was being very strategic with when and who actually got student loan forgiveness. Guess what? What's happening in two weeks? In two weeks, on November 8th, that is, let's see, one, two... Uh, three weeks, three weeks from tomorrow is November 8th. Guess what? That's election day. That's election day. Guess why Democrats decided to wait until October 17th to go and do student loan forgiveness and open up the application. Guess what? Now in everybody's mind, if you are a voter, well, this, this group of people, they just gave me everything that I needed. They wiped away $10,000 in student loan debt. I'm going to vote Democrat. Well, that's a good strategy. That's a very good strategy. And I said this before, that understand what's going to happen. We're going to see student debt, or student, uh, debt forgiveness. We will see that. It was just a matter of time. And I said this before. Guess what's going to happen for Social Security? I, I don't know if we're going to see something. We're not going to see something in 2022. I can almost guarantee that. But in 2023, there's going to be discussions there's going to be talks, but come 2024 for the presidential election, you better bet Democrats are going to do everything they can to make changes to Social Security, and it's going to happen in 2024. That's my prediction because it's going to give more Americans a better sense of, of wealth, maybe a false sense, but they're going to give them a better sense of having some wealth. So that's what we know at this time. As always, as we know more, I promise. I'll come back on and share all latest news and updates again. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.